Pharmacogenics seems new, but I've been talking about it for a long, long time. In fact, in 2003, I attended my first of many anti-aging conferences in Chicago. I had no idea what I would learn, but one thing was certain. I wanted to find a new model for healthcare delivery for my practice. No longer did I want to be part of a system treating people only when they were sick, but rather become a more proactive doctor in keeping people healthy. So when I first attended this conference, you know that you get a bag of goodies, uh, starting with a program, and then there was a bunch of flyers, and I was flipping through them, and one caught my eye. It was a company called Genesis, which originated from Austria, and they claimed that they were the first consumer genetics company in the world. Well, I couldn't resist because here I was thinking, now it's time that maybe I find something really innovative and new. So I attended their booth, and they showed me what kind of tests they did. Now, one of the things that they showed me was a report of what would be printed out after you do your genetics test. And I couldn't believe my eyes. I was looking at it like, am I in 2003 or am I in 2050? Because what it showed was a whole list of disease risk factors that could tell you whether you were at higher risk or lower risk. And I thought, okay, well, I've heard about that. That's not a big deal. And that may be practical or not. But then I looked and I saw beta blockers, ACE inhibitors. And I'm like, wait a second. You can genetically say in advance which drugs would work for people and which ones couldn't. So I looked at the guy and I, I literally had to say to him, I'm going to ask you a simple question. Will this test be able to help me determine which medication I should give to my patient that will be effective and not harmful? And the simple answer was yes. Pharmacogenetics focuses on individual genes to identify markers across the genome that affect the drug metabolism, distribution, receptor targets, and biological effects. Now, put in layman's terms, it means I need to find from your DNA which drugs work for you and how well they work for you, making sure that they're effective and not harmful. Let's begin with a simple biology 101 lesson about pharmacogenetics. DNA is easily collected by a cheek swab followed by a lab analysis. The test reads your ability to process or metabolize prescriptions or over-the-counter drugs by your liver enzymes. Results last a lifetime because your DNA is inherited from your parents, which will never change. In other words, pharmacogenetics is a drug sensitivity test. It's not just about the ability to process a drug safely, but rather the importance of achieving an optimal dose of medications. Plasma drug levels can vary more than a thousand fold when the same drug dose is administered to two individuals having approximately the same weight. So as a person takes more than one drug, the drug-drug or drug-gene interactions get more complicated. Most chronic disease patients take more than six drugs per day. Some prescription, others are over-the-counter drugs, and others are supplements. I'm going to give you an example of how pharmacogenetics is so critical. One of my patients who saw me uh, told me that he's had a history of irregular heartbeats and ultimately had surgery for that to cure that problem. But two years prior to his surgery, he probably went to the emergency department five, ten times, each time getting a different medication. When we did his pharmacogenetics, this is what we learned. In fact, he was completely resistant to all these medications. And had he learned before he had a surgery that none of the drugs work, they probably would have gone straight to surgery and reduced his risk of dying because of irregular heartbeats for two years. I'm going to make another very simple example that is probably more common. So you get migraine headaches and you get low back pain and you take Advil and you feel like, does it work? Well, for some people, they need to take double the amount. And the only way that you're going to know that is to know your pharmacogenetics. 
Now, while it's important to understand how a drug might work for an individual patient of mine, it's also really important to understand that pharmacogenetics plays a huge role in our ability to save the healthcare system a lot of money and save many lives as well. In a recent study sponsored by the company Genex, done with the University of Utah on over a thousand patients, 200 of them were given a pharmacogenetics test and then were given a personalized prescribing algorithm. In it, what they discovered was those who got that information and the hospital itself was able to decrease those individuals by 40% hospitalizations and a 70% decrease in their emergency visits. This results, very frankly, into cost savings for the hospital. Now, let's bring it down to the general population. Each year, over 8 million adverse drug reactions occur in North America, resulting in more than 100,000 deaths. Now, this is equivalent to the downing of over 550 Airbus 320s in one year. This is a huge number of deaths, and it's really a travesty in our medical system. We would never allow that in aviation. We all freak out when five airplanes go down in one year. So doesn't it make sense that the more we know about the patient, then we can give them the appropriate treatment, and the more likely it's going to be personalized. And Evan's base would greatly also create a likelihood that it will be safe, effective, rather than ineffective or harmful. Given that I've said that, why doesn't the pharmacies, physicians, and even the healthcare system embrace and adopt a cost-saving and life-saving test known as pharmacogenetics? I have a few answers I've formulated over the years. The first one is a simple lack of awareness and education. Simply not knowing that the test even exists and it's available for many years now, and more importantly, how to interpret the results against a backdrop of medications being taken. I am still shocked that today's physicians are not being taught, and the future physicians in medical school are not being taught in big detail about how to implement pharmacogenetics. The second one is just ignorance. Consumer ignorance, I'd say, not understanding how genetics is one of the most reliable and predictive tools for drug sensitivity. The third one is cost. And at the moment, the public health system and many insurers do not cover it widely, though I'm hopeful that soon it will slowly change. I've seen that some of the employers are starting to adopt this as a cost-saving strategy and a precursor to approving very costly medications. And the fourth one is hiding behind what I call privacy issues. Well, we don't have a clear guideline on how to manage genetic information, so we can't do it. I think that's just hogwash. All these barriers can be overcome by educating you, the health consumer. You are the most powerful person in this role of advocacy. So learn about pharmacogenetics and ask for the test. Pharmacogenetics is a precise and accurate test. It tells you your drug sensitivity, what drug works or doesn't work for you. It's a simple test. A cheek swab doesn't even hurt. Will give you life-saving information for life. You won't need to be an example of an experiment in the emergency department. And there is software to support your understanding of your results, which can identify which drugs are safe and effective and the proper dose for you. Last but not least, it costs only a few hundred dollars, less than a plane ticket for your vacation. I ask myself every day, why would anyone want to be a lab experiment for medications? At the moment, prescribing medications is simply trial and error medicine, and it could cost you your life or those of your loved ones. 
by having genetic information about yourself is the first of many steps in personalized medicine. And in the case of pharmacogenetics, it is also the best defensive medicine money can buy.